Tina Turner. Okay, Tina, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure. It's a privilege for me and for our viewers, definitely. I uh, told the people that uh, you are the queen of the rock and roll. Do you feel like a queen? No. Would you like to be a queen? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what, uh, what's really involved. I mean, because sometimes what looks like is not what is. So I don't like to sort of step in territories that I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but anyhow, I read somewhere, maybe it's a lie, but you are going to tell me if it's a lie or not, that uh, uh, you believe in, uh, in life after death and yes. in the next reincarnation you'll be a queen. Is that true? I said I plan to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, if that's what queens do, then it's good. <laughs> anyhow, I know that you have in your apartment a statue of an Egyptian queen. Yes. Is, has anything to do with that queen thing that we're talking about? Well, I learned a lot about um, there was actually a, a queen, and her name was Hepchitsut, and she actually reigned as Pharaoh. Very few people know about her. And. Uh, I've just been sort of doing a lot of study about her. I was told a few things that sort of mm -hmm. involving my life and that far back, I could sort of relate to. I'm gonna, so. I'm gonna tell you something. I had to study everything about her life <laughs> to have this conversation with you. I know everything about that queen, but anyhow, we can talk about that later. Right. But let's go to your professional life. You've been between 75, as far as I can remember, because I'm very old. Are you? Yes, I was Good. born before 75. <laughs> and <laughs> in 75, between 75 and 83, when there was the explosion, the Tina Turner explosion, what happened in your career in those eight years? Well, for 10 years, I traveled on my own as a solo artist. Um, I didn't really name it review, but I had two male dancers and two female dancers, and uh, my own band for the first time. I worked the larger hotels in America and Canada, and uh, I still work parts of uh, Australia and, um, and Europe. Mm -hmm. And for uh, really seven years, I'd learned what I could do on my own uh, with working with the music and, and arranging my own show and coming to grips with mastering my performance uh, without the help of anyone else. Mm -hmm. And then I changed management and went with Roger Davies because I was ready to sort of start my career musically. And that was the beginning of hit records, mm -hmm. hit music. Do you know, what do you call those 10 years hard times? They were great times for me. I think that they could be hard for some people because um, what you experience in your life has a lot to do with what is hard. Why it was good for me because I, I had just been divorced and I was free mm -hmm. and I was doing what I wanted to do. Why are you laughing about it? <laughs> what do you have in favor of divorce? <laughs> Well, for me, you see, it's, it's different from maybe some of your normal divorces. I was, uh, I had sort of been uh, trapped for many years there, and mm -hmm. it was very depressing, and I was very unhappy. So after my divorce, I, be I started to becoming a happy person. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't hard for me because I was realizing a lot of my own dreams mm -hmm. during that period, and then I went forward with my career, which is like, went the next step, you know? So it... It, no, it was not hard for me. It was, mm -hmm. it was very nice. Anyhow, you said before that you realized that you could do your own career without the help of anyone else. Are you thinking about Ike when you say that? Well, I was thinking in terms of, usually you need some kind of um, arranger for the music, as you call it, a director or whatever. I did it all verbally with the musicians. I wasn't just, just talking about my ex-husband. I, I knew that I would need good musicians. Mm -hmm. I found those musicians. I communicated with them. Mm -hmm. I basically choreographed my own show, um, costumes and all, mistakes and all as well. Mm -hmm. But I did it myself, and so I mean, I found out that without a hit record, I could still survive. You know? mm -hmm. But then, how the hit record happened? Did uh, you expect 
that reaction of the public to no. let's stay together. No, I didn't. But I can understand it because I never left my audience. I was mm -hmm. continuously performing, mm -hmm. and my public waited for the material that I would eventually give them. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it was as big as it was. But I had made a little space on, on a wall at my house, and I felt, well, for the, for the rest of the time that, that, I'm, that I will record, I'll probably fill this side of the wall. And I had put the records of Ike and Tina's on the opposite side. Now that entire wall is only of private dancer. It's just one wall of gold, silver, and platinum. All mine. All of the Ike and Tina's are down now. So it was, a, it was a real surprise. As far as I know, it's a brick wall, that special one. There, you know about that wall. Well, yeah, I've been there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when. Well, you were traveling in Australia, and <laughs> I was there as a pilgrim. Oh. And I watched your brick wall early, hang all the gold and silver and platinum it's, records. It's nice, isn't it? uh -huh. yeah. You know, according to the image that uh, I think you have, or the public thinks about you, you are beautiful. Some people think, well, most of the people think you are very sexy. You are a great performer. You have lots of hits. And um, in the consequence of that, you have lots of money as well. Is that enough to be happy? Or are you looking for something else in your life? Um, success can take on a part of happiness. Um, I think it's all what a person would need. Some women would feel that if you've gone through a 16-year marriage and you've had children, you might not need to do it again. I plan to marry again. I plan to to take care of the opposite side of my career because when the lights are out and the people are not there, there's other feelings and other emotions that's not taken care of. But I'm not bothered with it right now because my career is really keeping me quite busy. Mm -hmm. And actually, if I was in love, I wouldn't be here today. Possibly you are not in love. So we can enjoy your company. Uh, you've been uh, in the movies as well. You start with Tommy, as far as I remember. Ken yes. Russell's Tommy. That was How was first. it? Oh, it was so exciting. I didn't take the part. Actually, I didn't actually know that I was an acid queen, right. drug queen. I took the part because she was a mad woman, and she, she turned into that machine, and she had that little apartment up there, and I was excited about that. And as I was doing the part, I, didn't, I still didn't really realize what was happening, because I didn't read the script. I only read just that mm -hmm. part. And when the girls brought the pillow with the needle, I went, oh, I'm promoting <laughs> drugs. I couldn't believe it. I was, wasn't too happy about that. So it took a, just a second for me to sort of compose myself, and I realized, well, it is acting after all, you know, and uh, people know that I never really did drugs. So that was a part of what that was like. But other than that, it was so exciting. Mm -hmm. And then came Mad Max, mm -hmm. Beyond the Thunderdome. Yeah. How was it? Another queen, huh? <laughs> you see? You see? I have, I have reasons to ask you about the... Well, I don't know why. People seem to want to give me that title. Maybe it's because I've worked a long time. That was the epitome of my acting career at this point, because I was actually speaking. You see, with Essa Queen, I was still dancing and singing. Entity didn't dance, so she didn't sing. She was driving cars, and she mm. was queen of a city, and she was in control of something she had built. And I felt really very strong playing the part of that mm. woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, it actually sort of felt like something I'd done maybe another lifetime or something. And, and I was there alone. It was the first time that I'd totally gone on my own. No management, no assistance, nothing. Just me with the movie people. And I really do know that that's what I want to do. I know that's the next step. Mm -hmm. Is that true that you refused the, the, the role in the Purple Collar? Yes, because I don't, I don't want to sing. The part that they, they had offered me was the girl that was singing and mm -hmm. coming from the church. And I just feel like that's the part they always want to give black people, you know? There are a lot of great black actresses and actors, and the parts that I want to do is more exciting and uncommon. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do common parts. I want to do like uh, what Sigourney Weaver is doing. Mm -hmm. I want to do, even if I could play a part like... Mm -hmm like uh, Terminator or, you know, I want to, I just, just for the finish of what I'm feeling right now, and then I can do as many color purples or whatever there is mm -hmm. if I want to, but that was also very close to my past mm -hmm. marriage, and I didn't want to be reminded 
So I didn't take that I have part. the feeling that you're trying to forget those times with Ike. Is that true? I've basically forgotten, but the press is still very curious to want to talk about Ike and his music. And I, I have to make a joke about it because before my success, no one wanted to know about Ike or his music, you know? But no, I'm asking <laughs> you because I actually saw you in Cannes, in the Midem, uh, yeah. uh, acting with Ike and, yeah. and, and the band. Well, it's been many years. It was a then. great show, though. Yeah. So I have nothing to complain oh, about. Oh, no, so those, but, those yeah. were good years. I mean, the, the performance. And all of what I'd done for myself back in the time, I don't put that down. I'd mm. learned and I, I, that's what I took mm. with me. I didn't take money, I didn't take any property, but mm. I did take all of what I had learned as a performer from those years. Mm -hmm. So I do put value on that. You have two sons, right? Yes. What are they doing? You are traveling My, so much. Yeah, well, I was always traveling. How are you as a mother? I, I was as good as I could be. I took them with me um, on uh, school vacations and, and I had family and very good housekeepers to sort of take care of them. And, Would you like and to being see them in the music yeah? world? I don't mind if, if it's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm the type of mother, by being a traveling person, I, I can tell them what the options are, and then I think it's right for them to make the decisions and experience what they have to experience, and then they can truly know what they want mm -hmm. to do. I think that's healthier, mm -hmm. at their ages especially. Are you a big spender? Yes. What do you buy? Um, don't try to buy me, because <laughs> I'm not on sale now. <laughs> well, I buy furniture. Clothes. Furniture. Yeah, I decorate my house. Mm -hmm. uh, I With an Austrian bed? Yes. 19th Gosh, century? You've done all kinds of research on me, haven't you? No, I've been there. I told oh, you, you don't believe okay. me. You've been there. Come on. <laughs> well, that, all of that stuff was actually bought before my success. That's why I'm so proud of my, my home, is because um, I, everything I've got now, it came before my success. The money that I'm collecting at this time of my life is securing my family and, and setting me up so that I'll never have to ever worry about working again, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not wealthy yet. Mm -hmm. The way Come I spend, on. I would think. No, Come no, no, on. no, no, I had, I had quite a bit of lawsuits and bills and expenses. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one at the head of the family when something happens, I have to pay the rent or I have to buy the cars. And I, mm -hmm. that's a big responsibility. My money is not just mine. I'm sort of there to sort of issue out, you know. So it goes, it's not just there for me, you mm -hmm. know. Okay, yeah, now, uh, your biography was just published or some few months ago. Yes. Are yes. you happy with it? Have you read it after it was published? I read it many times, yes. I, I, um, I haven't actually read the book now because I've read it so many times and I was just so tired of hearing it and talking about it. Mm -hmm. But I felt like if I, if I finally did that book, then the people would, would know everything and wouldn't have to ask me constantly. I've been divorced 10 years and people are constantly talking about what happened mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And Come on, so is that, that an was invitation to me to stop questioning? No, I was just sort of or explaining why question. the book. It was like to say, well, here it is, and you don't even have to ask anything anymore because there's nothing I can answer. It's all right here. Mm -hmm. And so I want to go forward from But here. there are other books about your life. Yes, but they were Three misquotes. Months. They were sort of taken from interviews and it was, you know, mm -hmm. you know, when you sort of translate things, it doesn't come out with the same meaning of what an artist says. Did you read those sometimes. ones? Some of them I did. Some of that is what made me make the decision now to, Are they to write reliable that book. ones? No, not really. No. Not really. No, it was just, I think someone was sort of capitalizing on the success. There were lots of pictures, starting from the beginning, way, mm -hmm. way back in, in the 60s, and, and all with the, the stones and all the guys, and, and then just, just uh, prints taken from magazines. It mm -hmm. was not a story, mm -hmm. not what my book. My book is starting with the before Ikes, mm -hmm. because my problem started before my ex-husband, actually. Okay. Just two more questions, you know. The first one is, uh, this is your last album. Is already a silver disc in Portugal. Oh, break wow. every rule. Uh, well, do you like to break rules? No, 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 no. That uh, yeah. well, yes. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes or no? Well, yes, but it's not a matter of liking to break rules. It means that I set my own rules for myself, uh -huh. and and people look at me and they say, "Well, this is not what a normal 46-year-old woman do." Or, but it's, it's what I do because it's my life and I stay safe within the realms of life because I live in this world. Mm -hmm. So breaking the rules is very sort of uh, appropriate for me is because it's how I've lived my life in the last 10 years. So we thought it was better than slave because that song that was taken from is called I'll Be Your Slave. I don't want to be a slave ever again. You know? So we, ever we just again? Uh, ever. Again? again? No, ever again. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, I, I see so many important names in this album like David Bowie, Phil Collins, and so on. Yeah. Are you friends with them? Yes. Yes. And uh, do you like to perform with them? Well, haven't performed with Phil yet. He, I did a, he was producing Eric Clapton. 
-hmm. and he needed the um, female back background vocals, and that's how we met. And then he said, well, if you need anything for your album, I'll, I'll do it. But um, David and Mick mm -hmm. and... Brian no, Adams. And Brian Adams, yes, mm -hmm. but not Nafla yet, just, just uh, in the studio with, with Nafla mm -hmm. and Phil. Do you usually go to, to watch other people's concerts? When I can, I like, I like to, because I never get the chance to. Because what we kind always of music? Well, I'm still into sort of rock and roll, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like a lot of what Steve Winwood is doing now, because it's, it's close the to the R&B. Yeah, and mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's close enough to what I feel in R&B, not, not mm -hmm. that it would get too depressing, because it's just right between, you know. Mm -hmm. I think if I did another R&B album, it would, I would certainly want to work with him on it, because he stays right in the, his feeling is romantic, and then he's singing, you know, with the emotions of uh, R&B. So that's what I like about it. But um, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm really contemplating that, I think. OK, fine. So uh, as I told you, uh, this, uh, this album is already um, a silver, silver record. Here. Wonderful. In, Thank you. In Portugal. But before that one, Private Dancer, it uh, was a gold disc. Oh, okay. So your brick wall is going to have two <laughs> it's more. Going to have two and more. I'm very pleased on behalf of the Association of the Publishers in Portugal to deliver you two records, one silver, one gold. Will you accept them? I most certainly will. Okay, that's my pleasure. Oh, they're here. Yes, Beautiful. surprise, surprise. Beautiful. That's the gold one for Private Dancer. <laughs> and the silver one. Okay, Tina. Thank you. Thank you. If you don't mind, first of all, I want to thank you for our so candid answers. And uh, it was a great pleasure to me to have this chance of asking you some questions. I'd like to have the answers a ah. long time ago, since I saw you in Cannes. But uh, definitely, I wouldn't allow you to leave this stage, this studio, without singing for us. Oh, all right. Would you? I'd love to. Yes. Okay, from the last album? Yes. Why okay. Not? All right. The strong ones? Let's see, which one are we doing first? Is that the... Um, uh, what you get is, what what you get is what you see. How about it? All right. Okay. Tina <laughs> Turner.